Arsenal are back and with a bang. Having smashed five past Ipswich Town last week, it was a similar case in Germany as new signing Gabriel Jesus announced himself to the world against FC Nuremberg. It was a game full of plenty of action, but what exactly did we learn? Could Arsenal make a shock move for Chelsea's N'Golo Kante? Who's the Sandro Martinez picking out of Arsenal or Manchester United? And will the Gunners make a bid for Benfica's Alejandro Gr Ronaldo. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bows14 and welcome back to your boy's channel. Your boy is back after a very small hiatus. So don't forget to smash a like, subscribe if you are new and help your boy as we are on the road to 200,000 subscribers. The giveaway for the Arsenal shirt is still ongoing. So if you want to win that, all the details are down below in the description. But let's start off with Arsenal versus FC Nuremberg. The game itself ended five goals to three to Arsenal with goals from Gabriel. Gabriel Jesus, Mohamed Elneny and two on goals. This was a game where Arsenal were 2-0 down in the first half and uh, it was low-key panic stations. But with things not going to plan and surely Arteta frustrated, in that second half it was time to call upon Jesus. On comes Gabriel Jesus and in 90 seconds scores his first Arsenal goal and with all the hype that has surrounded the transfer, let's just say in this performance we saw so many exciting signs. The things that impressed me straight away, first things first, the movements of the player. Last season with Alexandre Lacazette. One thing that I always thought that Arsenal lacked was a striker that was able to move in the box and ultimately to get onto the end of crosses. In this game, the sharp movements inside the box, in behind, dropping off deep, playing as a false nine, linking up play with some short and incisive passing. It was a complete striker's performance and he changed the game for Arsenal. Not only was he involved in the third and fourth goals, but in that fifth goal, he once again showcased that movement. And for me, that is going to be so important next season and with the creators of Odegaard, Saka and even Martinelli. We have players that can make the passes. If we have the players that make the runs, we will make far more big chances which is a clear issue under Arteta and hopefully, fingers crossed, score more goals. I'm also very impressed by the personality of the player. After the game, when asked on being the superstar of the team, he replies with, I don't want to be the superstar. I just want to play football, go on the pitch, help my teammates like a family. We have to do it together. Everything. Outside the pitch and on the pitch. In all of his interviews thus far as an Arsenal player, I think that Jesus has spoken pretty well and he's always given answers that are, you know, not your typical PR robotic answers that footballers give. He's given responses that actually matter. Jesus Zeus has come to the Emirates, I think to showcase the entire world. This is the player that he could have been at Man City and at 25 years of age entering the peak of his powers as some of the best strikers in the world have showcased, you know, the prime example being Karim Benzema. Certain strikers as they get older, as they get more experience, become far better goal scorers and far better players. But it wasn't just the Arsenal number 9 that impressed, but also the Arsenal number 14. In that second half, again showcasing the link up play, the versatility, drifting out wide to the left hand side linking up so well with Gabriel Jesus when Nketiah gets the ball he loves to be decisive to make things happen and as he grows better and better physically we will see Nketiah impose himself far more often and hopefully that is alongside Gabriel Jesus because the third thing that I spotted was in that second half Arteta changed his entire tactics moving from his 4-3-3 to the 3-5-2 games like last season against Wolves at the Emirates Stadium where Arsenal had to win the game and were 1-0 down and games like that Arteta has shown to us after fans that he can move to a two up front and we saw that once again in this game going two up front and Nketiah and Jesus look like a pretty decent partnership. There seemed to be some chemistry there straight away and a connection and they seem to understand each other's movements. Even though I still think Arteta is going to go for that full 3-3. In certain games when the going gets tough and Arsenal need to come back, maybe this 3-5-2 is something that us Arsenal fans need to keep an eye on. The strikers deserve all the limelight but also we have to talk about Gabriel Martinelli. Coming on in that second half, I think he also played a massive part in changing the game. And for me, it looks like Martinelli has found his role in this Arsenal team. He is becoming more and more of that touchline winger and he seems to be our most natural left winger. So to see a 
Emil Smith Rowe playing in the first half and playing more as a number eight. With the way that Martinelli is growing with experience and game by game, I think next year as he fully adapts to that position, we could see an even better Gabriel Martinelli and in that second half, the cross for the fifth goal. The vision from Martinelli was fantastic and it showcased how decisive he can also be in that final third. So my question to you guys is, going into the start of next season with the reintroduction of Bukayo Saka, Martin Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, what do you think should be Mikko Arteta's go-to starting front three? The final thing that I think that stands out in this game was the role of Albert Sambi Lokonga. Now in that first half, we saw Sambi playing as that number six. And to be brutally honest, I think it was a pretty poor performance in that first half. He tried his best to progress the ball, but ultimately when playing as that number six, Sambi doesn't right now have the composure to make simple passes and to keep the ball. He is still pretty young and he seems pretty raw. So to play as that number six, I just don't think he's quite ready just as of right now. But in the second half, playing as more of a number eight, that's where he thrives a lot more. Able to get into that final third and actually make things happen there. For me at least, it seems like Sambi is far more comfortable playing as a number eight, playing more advanced than when he plays as a number six. Moving on to the latest Arsenal transfer news. Now we have to start off with Thomas Partey. Despite playing in the game versus Ipswich Town and being fit and available, he was not a part of the Arsenal squad that travelled to Germany. And that raised a few eyebrows and there is a lot of uncertainty. And the only thing that we have got from the player side was an Instagram story that he posted on the match day against FC Nuremberg. A small little graphic on his story is all that we have and we are being starved of actual information. So I think it's very important that we get further clarification from reliable sources that really break down what has happened with Thomas Partey and if he is going to be available for Arsenal in pre-season and more importantly for the start of the season against Crystal Palace. It might mean that Arsenal have to dip their hands into the transfer market and sign a number six type of profile. But could that player be Chelsea's Angolo Kante? Well an exclusive from the Daily Star is to claim that Arsenal are considering a shock approach for Chelsea midfielder Angolo Kante. Arsenal are ready to sound out whether Chelsea will cash in now with just 12 months remaining on Kante's current contract. Angolo Kante, 30 years of age, a World Cup winner, a Premier League winner, a PFA player of the year. He's won the Champions League. This guy is a top world-class player and when it comes to winning duels and just being a top defensive midfielder, yes, Kante is up there with the best. But last year for Chelsea, under Thomas Tuchel, we didn't see the best of Kante, whether that was down to injuries or him not being suited to the 3-4-3. But entering the final year of his contract and he's on massive wages, by the way, of £300,000 a week, it looks like Chelsea are open to offers and that's why you get the links towards Arsenal Football Club. But in my opinion, I am going to have to say respectfully no. First things first, I don't think the source itself is ultimately too reliable. But secondly, and more importantly, is Angola Kante that number six profile? I don't think so. He's played as more of a number eight profile that is box to box and wins the ball higher up the pitch. We have not seen many games of Kante thrive as a lone number six. And while he is a tremendous defender and when it comes to winning duels, he's amazing. The number six profile that Arsenal need is a far better passer and Kante for me doesn't have that range that Arsenal will require but I'm sure that many fans will have their own opinion so my friends if N'Golo Kante is available do you think that Arsenal should make their move? According to Calcio Mercato in Italy Arsenal would be ready to offer 40 million euros for midfielder Ismail Benacer an offer that could cause AC Milan to waver. Ismail Benacer 24 years of age and an ex-Arsenal academy player and then signing for the Rossoneri in 2019 for 16 million euros. And the most important thing here is he is a number six profile. He's played there for AC Milan, for Empoli. With him not being the tallest, he is a very nifty midfielder. And when it comes to beating a press, he's pretty decent at that. As things stands, he only has two years left on his Milan contract. And last year, he wasn't as much of a starter as they won the Serie A, making more than half his appearances off the bench. So potentially, with him not being an out and out starter, Arsenal could make an offer, maybe not even as high as 40 million euros, and tempt Milan into selling the player. The latest on Lissandro Martinez from Ben Jacobs. Martinez was very sold on talking to Arteta. From what he understands, Arteta is taking a much more active direct role in this transfer window than in previous ones. He's calling up players, he's pitching the club directly, and he's co-selling with a do. So it looks like Mikel has taken my advice from the last video. He's gotten a phone call with Martinez and he's trying 
wanted to convince the player of the Arsenal project. But my concern isn't that Martinez isn't convinced by coming to the Emirates Stadium. The only concern that I have is the fact that Eric Ten Hag has an advantage over Arteta as he has that established relationship with the player and for me that gives Manchester United an advantage over Arsenal. And this was confirmed by Argentine reporter Gaston Edu saying that if the offers were the same for Lissandro Martinez of both Arsenal and Man United, I have the feeling that he will go to Manchester. For me, it looks like United have taken control of this transfer, they are active in negotiations and more importantly, are stomping up more money as things stands than Arsenal Football Club. And even according to Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United are planning to push again for Lissandro Martinez, with Ten Hag considering him a priority target. No intentions to give up after the opening bid was turned down. Lissandro has always been tempted by a reunion with Ten Hag, but has never refused Arsenal, who are still in the race. Yes, it looks like Arsenal aren't giving up, and yet they are technically still in the race. But with the breaking news coming from Mike Verway, that Manchester United have placed a 50 million euro offer for Lissandro Martinez, which includes bonuses. That 50 million has always been the price tag that Ajax have wanted. To be quite honest with you guys, United are far closer than Arsenal when it comes to closing this transfer. But according to Simon Jones of the Daily Mail, United have made the improved bid of 43 million pounds, but Ajax are still yet to accept and will wait to see if Arsenal also up their offer in an attempt to stir up an auction between the two Premier League clubs. Do Arsenal value Martinez at £43 million? Because we can't forget that Arsenal's first offer was close to the £25 million. Are they willing to pay upwards of £20 million extra than their original valuation for yes, a player that is pretty decent that could help us at left back, centre back and defensive midfield? But with the current uncertainty surrounding Thomas Partey, could we see Arsenal shift their finances into more of a defensive midfielder? According to reports in Portugal, Arsenal have intensified their interest in Benfica left back Alex Romaldo and are set to make a 7 million euro offer this week, a deal that pleases Benfica. Alejandro Grimaldo, a Spanish left back that started off at Barcelona, he's been at Benfica for a very long time and is a very decent attacking left back. Technically, he is a player that is pretty secure, he gets goals, he gets assists, and he's a very secure passer. So, playing as the inverted left back, where you have to play almost in midfield, even though I don't think he's the perfect left back, and defensively, we might have issues. Let's just say they were to spend £43 million on Alessandro Martinez. For the same price of one player, you could see Arsenal sign a cheaper left back and then spend more of their money on a more out and out defensive midfield type of profile. But moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with the retirement of an Arsenal player that had so much promise. He was meant to be the one, the Arsenal number 10, he came through hail end and now at the age of 30, unfortunately, he's had to retire as Super Jackie Wilshire has announced his retirement. Having left Arsenal in 2019, things just never quite worked out at West Ham or at Bournemouth. It feels like yesterday when he broke onto the scene at the Emirates, that game against Barcelona, winning the PFA Young Player of the Year in 2011. But this is not the end of his Arsenal story, as the exclusive from David Ornstein has revealed that Arsenal are set to name Jack Wilshere as the under-18s head coach. After the 30-year-old retirement, the appointment is being finalised. I am really for this idea because the amount of experience that Wilshire has coming through Hill End, this guy could be an inspiration for the young players who will see Wilshire as a player that has come through the same environments and hopefully a pathway into the first team. According to Sky in Germany, Bert Leno has verbally agreed to join Fulham. It's up to Arsenal and Fulham to agree terms, with Arsenal demanding around £11 million for the German. It's a fair price tag for me for a player that has one year left on his contract and clearly is out of favour at the Emirates Stadium. I've always liked Burt Leno and I've got so much respect for him. I still think that he is a pretty decent goalkeeper and could do very good things at Fulham but unfortunately at Arsenal with his inability to play out the back, I just don't see a future at the Emirates Stadium. The agent of Lucas Torreira says, Lucas to Juventus, in fact he would like to stay and play in Italy. But today, Arsenal has called him up for the tour they will do in America, so he seems to be a part of the programme. I do wonder now, where Torreira has made it clear that he wants to leave Arsenal, he wants to stay in Italy. With all of that's happening with Thomas Partey and so far Arsenal not signing a number 6, Torreira is a player that played as a number 6 last season in the Serie A to a very decent standard. 
Could we see a Rimons Harder for Terreira in an Arsenal shirt and maybe give him a chance during pre-season? Anyways, that's the video there and there. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. And if you have, don't forget to smash a like and subscribe if you are new. If you would like to follow your boy on all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was today's episode of the Transfers FC. Gabby Jesus has announced his arrival. Two goals on his debut. Beautiful scenes now for Arsenal. Give us some sightings. Until then, take care of yourselves and live it.